So speaking of very romantic inventions, um, the beautiful F minor. That one, of course, is for the romantic in your studio, right? because it's so filled with angst. Um, it's a minor key. Oh, it's just such a lovely, lovely piece of music. But um, how are we going to design the, um, the dynamics so it doesn't do what uh, it often, the way I often hear it when I'm judging competitions, it's pure Bachmannian, this one. It becomes kind of unbearable and I become motion sick by the end. <laughs> so instead of that, let's see what it's actually made of. In any invention, it's always a good idea to find the subject and, you know, to color it in some way. So the subject here is four measures long. Oh, how beautiful, right? Uh, yeah, but as you can see, Bach doesn't favor us with too many repetitions of this beautiful subject, does he? So um, everything else seems to be kind of blank and we can't have that because if students don't understand what stuff is, their mind automatically treats it as filler. Ah, oh, no, Bach does not do filler. Mm -hmm. This is a, a very important rule to remember, just as Bach does not do boring. So all of this stuff in the middle um, is not filler and it's very important to understand what it is because it's um, the analysis which gives us the interpretation. So let's take apart our actual subject. The subject is four measures long, as, as we said, and it's structured very much as actually a classical phrase, something that, let's say, Haydn or Mozart would do. So we have a gesture, then the, the same gesture is repeated sort of at a higher uh, emotional and probably dynamic level. I mean, whoa, right? And then we come to the climax of the whole shebang. and those um, diminished intervals, I mean, young, right? And then we have the last measure, which allows the temperature to go down some. Right? So we have essentially three measures of things that go higher and higher emotionally, and one measure that provides release. That kind of gives us dynamics on a silver platter, doesn't it? So we're going to crescendo for three measures, and we're going to diminuendo rather precipitously in the last measure. To, so that the symmetry works out more or less. Okay, so if we know that, we can now start looking at the parts that were not the four measure subject and see what they're actually made of. So notice my little color system, so that um, the blue boxes contain the original gesture, and then the green box contains um, the, that highest emotional climax thing, and finally the pink box has the release. That in mind, I have now analyzed stuff that is not the four measure subject in terms of the same boxes. And very interesting things come out. We're counting kind of again, uh, but we're also seeing what's going on. So take a look at the fourth system. When we now have a truncated version of our subject, instead of being four measures, it's now only three. So, and which three measures has Bach selected for us? So uh, we have the two original gestures, but oh my goodness, even more heat now, right? Okay, this one goes down, but it goes down by a tritone, <coughs> which I'm thinking uh, makes the temperature rise even higher. And then we have the green thing with that wonderful interval and appoggiatura in the end. What are we missing? We're missing the pink thing, the one that allowed the temperature to go down. We're missing the one and only diminuendo measure. Hmm. That must tell us something. And then as often as Bach does, as I keep saying, Bach repeats the whole pattern again, right? You can see that this is now going to be measures 12, 13, and 14, where once again, we have the two blue measures and the green measure, and we're again missing the pink measure. So again, the, um, the level of energy rises and is not allowed to fall. Well, that's really fascinating. How much do we, should we sound like we're striving forward? How much pain is inherent in all this? How little relief we get, right? Then take a look at uh, the second page. So once again, we have truncated versions of the subject. But this time we only have two measures. And this is measures 21 and 22, where all we have is one blue thing, 
but then we have the pink thing. We haven't heard that in some time, right? Remember? So we have a little bit of a rise, and we have the fall, and this time they're symmetrical. We don't have three measures of crescendo and one measure of diminuendo. We have one to one. So overall, I'm thinking the, uh, the, the overall level of excitement is beginning to come down some. And then, as usual, Bach does it again. Okay. So we, we get everything twice. Okay, that if you look at my little chart, you'll see that still a whole, a whole bunch of stuff is left uncolored. Well, we can't have that. We cannot. So here's my analysis of the counter subjects. The counter subject is made up also of, of four measures, right? Um, which are tied exactly to um, the measures of the subject. So in other words, what used to be a blue box in the right hand is accompanied by um, a yellow oval. They're quite related. Right? And then, uh, so there's two of those because there were two blue boxes. What used to be the green um, overly emotional thing, uh, now in the left hand has a scale, a very important scale. You see the blue oval, which sort of turns around at the end. And finally, our relaxing measure just has a, a regular scale. And I've done uh, analysis, which is interesting in itself, but where it becomes super important is now um, uh, and measures 14, 15, and 16. Well, you notice the right hand doesn't have anything because we don't have our subject. No element of a subject is present. And instead, we have that horrifying um, string of ornaments, which our students hate so very, very much. And they hate them rightly, if you think about it. They're so easy to play on a harpsichord. They're so fast, they play themselves. I play a couple of harpsichord concerts a year, and I usually practice stuff on the piano first. I don't have a harpsichord in my home. And then I sit down to play on a harpsichord, and everything is exactly twice faster. And somehow my fingers, with absolutely no input from my brain, are doing twice as much ornamentation, and each ornament has twice as many notes in it, and I'm just looking at my fingers, and they're going off on their own, I don't know how. Um, on the piano, ornamentation is difficult, which is kind of why they stopped writing it. Our keys are, you know, go, go down too deep. Okay, so that lecture being over, I, I suggest uh, investing in a decent edition that uh, metricizes these ornaments and writes them out for the kids. I mean, I've done it before, but my handwriting is terrible, and it just makes it worse. A nice printed edition <laughs> is much better, like, like something like I have over here. And even then, this is very fast. The editor is a little bit optimistic. I would say half as many notes will do just fine. And the reason I'm saying that is, although it's the part we spend so much time on in a lesson, it is not the important part at all. All the interest here is in the left hand, because look at what's going on. So we have, in measure number 14, we have that blue thing. Right? Remember the blue thing? The blue thing is exactly accompanying exactly what it needs to accompany, the green thing. And um, as you notice, the, the blue unit itself is about two beats long, and then there's a beat of, you know, just, just notes to, oh my God, there I say filler uh, for one beat of time. But look at what happens right after that. We have two more repetitions of that blue material, but there is no third beat this time. Look at that. Um, instead of having one, two, three, we have one, two, one, two, and then another one, two. Well, that's a hemiola. That may be a term that you don't necessarily want to use for the kiddies, but you can say, look, what's, what, what's happened? We were in three before, and now suddenly, with no warning, we're in two. So, you know, da, 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 right? That, that's what I use, usually use as an example of a hemiola. Um, here it's slow, but the effect is the same. That's what the fun is. That's what um, the listener's ear should be directed toward. And the ornaments, eh, they're a compliment. And they're soft on the harpsichord. Right? So it's, it's important to explain that, that, you know, yes, you have to practice them. Yes, they're important, but that not nearly as important as, as what's going on in the other hand. Because that's the gift. That's the, that's the joy. That's sort of the raisin in the pudding that, that Bach is giving us.